when we take in information from our environment. This information is transformed into electrical signals that the nervous system can process. Once sensed, information enters our short-term memory, a temporary storage area. The temporal lobes, especially the hippocampus, are crucial for forming and retrieving short-term memories, including those that may later become long-term memories. This is like our mental workspace where we can manipulate and evaluate information. Henry Mullison, better known as H.M., was born in Manchester in 1926. He had a happy childhood until he was seven, hit by a bicycle, and suffered a head injury. At the age of 10, Henry began having seizures. The seizures became more severe over time, and they were debilitating by the time he was an adult. He was unable to hold down a job or live an everyday life. In 1953, at the age of 27, Henry underwent a bilateral medial temporal lobectomy. Dr. William Scoville, a neurosurgeon, performed the surgery. Scoville believed that the seizures originated in the brain's medial temporal lobe and decided to remove a thumb sized of the brain, including the hippocampus, amygdala, and entorhinal cortex on both sides of Henry's brain. The ice pick lobotomy, also known as the transorbital lobotomy, was a surgical procedure that involved inserting an instrument resembling an ice pick through the patient's eyeball through the orbital of the eye into the frontal lobe of the brain and moving it around. then proceeding to do the same in the other eye. The procedure was performed under local anesthesia and the patient did not need to be hospitalized. It was developed in the late 19th century as a treatment for mental illness, including schizophrenia, depression, and obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. It was widely used in the 1940s and 1950s, sometimes about 25 lobotomies in a single day. Before modern medicine and the use of chemical prescriptions, there was little one could do for the mentally ill. One of the biggest tragedies was that people were kept in the dark about the horrific consequences. Indeed, they could hardly give their consent. Informed consent was not in existence before 1957 before and after photos were publicly circulated, showing a manic-looking person followed by a photo of the same person looking calm or even smiling. Few people realized that, in the after picture, the patient was often more zombie than human. The cure rate was, at best, perhaps 50%. However, epilepsy is not considered a psychiatric problem, so how did H.M.'s case fit in? Dr. William Scoville actually developed his own surgical technique, which involved peeling down the skin of the forehead, drilling into the skull, and suctioning out two slivers from the brain. The surgery successfully reduced the severity of his seizures. However, it also left him with profound anterograde amnesia, meaning that he was unable to form new memories. He was unable to store further information permanently. He could not remember what he had eaten for breakfast, the names of people he had just met, or even the fact that he had just had a conversation with someone. 
Henry Mollison's short-term memory was very limited, lasting only for about under one minute. This means that he could remember things that had happened to him just a short time ago, but he quickly forgot them. He might get lost in familiar surroundings, forgot what he had just eaten, or have trouble following conversations. It essentially froze him in time. Mullison's emotional responses were blunted, so he showed less emotional reactivity to both positive and negative events, which seems like a bit of a cipher. He relied heavily on others for assistance with daily tasks and decision-making. He needed reminders, prompts, and guidance to navigate his day-to-day -day life. As a result, Mullison's memory became mostly limited to events that occurred years before his surgery in the distant past. He is one of the most studied patients in neuroscience history. Dr. Brenda Milner, with other researchers, worked with him for over 50 years to learn more about how memory works. Henry's case clearly showed that the hippocampus is essential for memory formation. He was, however, still able to improve his performance on various tasks even though he had no memory of ever encountering or practicing them. One of the famous experiments conducted with Henry was the mirror drawing task. In this task, the patient was asked to trace the outline of a star while looking at his hand and the pencil in a mirror that reversed the visual feedback. So, if the hand moved one way, the hand in the mirror moved the other. They asked HM to perform this task up to 10 times daily for three days. They counted the errors each time he went outside of the lines. At the beginning of the task, he performed poorly. Even healthy people struggle with this test in the beginning. But with practice, he improved significantly, even though he couldn't recall having done it before. He didn't remember engaging in this task, but he visibly improved. This improvement demonstrated that multiple memory systems were housed in different parts of the brain. And his ability to learn a new skill through procedural memory existed. Henry was highly intelligent, well-mannered, and could sit through hours and hours of testing without getting bored or complaining. Always eager to cooperate. Despite his severe memory deficits, H.M. retained awareness of his condition. He knew that he had undergone surgery and that he had difficulty forming new memories, which could be frustrating for him. passed away on December 2, 2008, at the age of 82. He died of respiratory failure at a nursing home. His brain was preserved after his death, allowing scientists to continue their research and gain further insights into the workings of memory and the brain. H.M.'s contribution to neuroscience continues to be invaluable even after his passing. Henry's story is a reminder of the complex and delicate nature of the human brain. While surgery can be a life-saving treatment for some conditions, it can also have unintended consequences. H.M.'s case also highlights the importance of ethical considerations in medical research.